Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. So this is going to be the uh, second part, really the first part of the uh, repair video on this. In the diagnostic video we saw, discovered that there's a uh, an overload, likely on the secondary, and coming down here to the rectifier socket and following some things, we see that you know, the wiring, from what I can tell on the schematic, looks correct. So what we're going to do is try to determine where the overload is and then uh, this uh, number 280 rectifier is trash. So I'm just going to solder in some solid state diodes for the purpose of troubleshooting. If I get it working then maybe I'll consider ordering a tube. So what I'm going to do is try to follow things uh, and see if I can discover where the short is. It's very likely going to be uh, somewhere in the field coil uh, or somewhere between the rectifier and the filters. Just need to figure out where. So I'm going to perplex over that a little bit see if I can come up with anything obvious. Alright, so poking around in here, the wiring to and from the field coil and everything checks out. However, what I did find is down in here see this little bit of frayed thing here that was touching the chassis and that was downstream of the second filter so that was shorting out for sure and so I pulled that free uh, then ohmed everything out again it appears to be okay I checked three other lines here there was another one that was fed this guy right here was fed from that same source and this guy over here was fed from that same source and the resistance was all very high. Uh, so we're going to plug it into the dim bulb tester and try it again. You see I've got my little 1 in 4007s tacked in just so that we can get some uh, action out of this thing. And so now that we've got that corrected, I'm going to see if this thing will work. All right, so here we are. We're going to start off on the 40 watt bulb and uh, see what we get. Well, that's better. Not as bright. Let's see what our voltages are here. One sixty three, that's a lot better. And then downstream of that, we've got ninety three. Let's see if we can see anything lighting up here on top of the chassis. Hard to see past the getter flashing. I don't see any tubes lighting up. But that could just be because of the uh, bulb, which is glowing dimly enough that I think I can put a 60 watt in there. So let's try a 60. All right, so here's a 60. That's pretty dim. Camera doesn't show it because of the AGC, but it certainly is better. Take some more measurements here. So we got 231 coming off the rectifier. And then 125 downstream of that. I don't hear anything yet. Got the volume all the way up. Just take some measurements on some of these RF tubes. Looking for heater voltage. So far I'm not finding any heater voltage. No 
No heater voltage. Oh, did you hear that? There's a hum from the speaker. That's a good sign. Let's go over to our audio output tube here. Hear a hum there too. Okay. One twenty. I'm sorry, I'm not holding the camera in the right spot. Half a volt there, half a volt there. Wow. So we got fifty eight volts on this side of this resistor and eight volts on the other side. This thing's dropping fifty volts. No wonder it gets hot. Of course, there could be something wrong there, but it's interesting that I get activity. Oh, here you go. Turn up the volume. Woo! Got a little shock there. That's because on the shaft of that volume control, there's 180 volts. Hooey! Interesting. <laughs> Is that control plate voltage or something? Holy crap. That's a little bit of a shocker. I can see that's why they got that isolated there with that uh, phenolic wafer. There's 180 volts there. Moving that switch doesn't do much of anything. So I get audio here. Where was I poking around at? Got to remember not to touch that uh, chassis there. Holy cow. Okay, well, it shows signs of life. Seventy three volts there. I'm thinking this is your uh, your input for your grid. So I'm going to try to clamp on a signal there and see if we get any uh, noise out of the speaker. Okay, so I've got a little portable signal generator here. I'm going to see if I can get any sound out of it injecting it into that spot there. Pretty quiet. But it's there. So it is, it's passing signal. Interesting, huh? So there's showing signs of life. So I guess the next thing I could do is put it on a Variac with like a 1 amp fuse and just give it the full 110 volts and see what happens. Just got to remember to stay away from that control. There's 180 volts on that control right now, so there's, I should probably put one of the wooden knobs back on it just so I don't zap the crap out of myself. I should look and see what this actually does. I'm guessing it's a screen voltage or something. Anyway, cool stuff, man. Okay, so here we go. We got it set up monitoring our uh, B voltage while I turn up the Variac and we'll see what happens.
We're parked at about 80 volts right now. Don't get much anything out of it. Funny how the volume control affects the B voltage so much. That's probably a little too high. But that's the solid state rectifier there. I think it wants 375 before the uh, filter. So that's where we're at right now. I really need to get my tube checker out and uh, figure out um, if any of this stuff is still good, all these two RF tubes. Yeah, no crackle, no sign of life, no nothing. Well, I can hear the speaker humming away. We get static if we turn that. So it's progress, better than it was. It's not popping the one amp fuse, so that's good. Interesting stuff. Like I said, I'm new to these old 1930s receivers. I don't tinker with these much. I'm more of a 50s and 60s guy. So anybody got any pointers of where I can look at next, probably the next would be the oscillator, I'd assume, and then work my way back. I don't know what I have frequency these run at. Uh, definitely going to have to, if I intend on using a solid state rectifier, put some sort of dropping resistor in there to take up the slack. Cause we're at 100 volts on the variac, and it's putting 373 out. The schematic says 375 before the filter, so... That's probably where it's supposed to be. And that goes up a little bit when I turn the volume down. So that's probably like a bias control or something. Interesting. Alright, well, that's where we're at for now. That's like part one of the repair video. We'll see if we can progress any more on this. Thanks for watching, guys.